We have Leah Printed from the Media Center. She just clenched her first countdown spot in the opening round. Leah, that was a lot of high drama. What were you feeling up there uh, first when you saw the, the Terry Redlet? A lot of high drama, absolutely. Uh, to be honest, it, excitement, but managed, managed expectations. Um, of course, yeah, I've never been a bigger Clay Melican fan than I was. When it, Terry and I were fine, we're friends. This was business today, and I wanted Clay to win bad, and he did. And ultimately, Terry took himself out, and I know what that pressure situation is like. Um, so. Yeah, when I saw that red light, I didn't even watch the cars go down the track. I found myself, I, I went like that, and I, and I went, okay, okay, he's out. No different than if you, know, you lost a normal round. That doesn't mean that we had clinched it. One, you know, one point, we still have a job to do. Get down the track, get down the track fast, try to win that round, but most importantly, clean. So I hustled back to the pit, or I'm sorry, hustled back to the car, got strapped in and we were actually late coming up there because we had to make a change from our standard pan pressure where if there's anything that goes wrong right before you're about to blow up, it saves everything. Well, we played on the safe side and we lowered that. We had to, we had to play it safe. So we set the car up to be fast and it was fast. And then pan pressure started creeping and triggered it sooner than it normally would on a normal run. And that ended my day there. Um, but in the big picture of everything, it's, it's bittersweet. I want to win the U.S. Nationals. That's, but that's not going to happen. We get to focus on the championship. And I can't tell you how incredible that feels and a weight lifted off of not just my shoulders, but so many people that helped make that happen. I mean, back to Dom and Bobby Lagana. They had the vision very first off with me. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen this year, but Leah, we think we, you know, we're behind you and we're going to get you in these cars for a couple of races. Like it started there, and then it kept going and it kept going. And I'm, I'm emotional because I get to be this person at, at the front of it, but it's because I've got to stand on the shoulders of so many people to be here. And now it's now it's just business time. I don't know if anyone has ever made the countdown under more unusual circumstances. So many different rides. You lost your ride. You had to hustle. Look for another ride. Look for sponsors to make it. It's got to be extra special to do it this way. Extra special. I mean, I thought at the beginning of the season, I was so pumped, like yes, oh, get in the countdown. That's going to be cool for the chase of that. And then, um, and that was a boring thought. Now, <laughs> compared compared to what's happened, um, it. It brings so much joy, um, but I just, I, I feel like everything happens for a reason. When we won in Phoenix, that happened there because it gave me the confidence. I didn't know that then, and I won in every category, um, that I gave me the confidence of, you know how to win, and you can finish this thing off, and there's a reason that, like, this is the push you're going to need because you don't know it yet, Leah, but your season's about to be turned upside down, and you're going to need to fall back on something, and that win is what, what it was. Um, yeah, no one else has been through this, um, and I think that kind of goes along with my overall story. No one else has really done things the way that I've done them. I haven't done them the way other people have done them. So I always say it's the new. We are the new, and I'm, I'm proud to be able to bring in new sponsors as we go for the new. Um, I just, I'm freaking happy. <laughs> have you talked to Papa John yet today? I have, that's why I was late coming out here. Um, I gave him a call, he watched from home. He did not bring his Papa Chopper here today. <laughs> he watched live on Fox, and uh, he said, you know what, great job. Um, yeah, the car looked like it, you know, fast. And at the end of the day, strategy. So we had a talk last night, and uh, you know, he said, it's about small steps forward. Because we're talking big picture stuff here, right? What Papa John is doing and what we're looking to do um, is big. And he didn't just create Papa John's overnight. And we're not going to win a championship overnight. we got to start with the first step of getting in the countdown. So uh, he was real proud of our team, told me to tell Don, good job, and our team. And he said, if the team, because when he went back, is the team excited? Are they pumped? Are they, are they super pumped? And I said, yes. I go, but not in like the throw a party kind of a way. Um, I said, John, it's actually, it was even cooler than that. 
It was, we shared in the emotion that we just lost a round at the U.S. Nationals. The first round sucks. But we shared in the emotion of, yeah, we're excited because we get to finish this now. Like, a whole other extra level of, yes, all that work for everybody. For Sean's team, I don't know if a lot of people know, but Sean's team has been so <laughs> instrumental in helping our team get to where we are. And that's, I believe, a destiny and fate how things work out. And, you know, people were thinking that, shoot, Sean was going to lay down for me today, for me to get, you know, to get down there. More or less, us have our own problems trying to get down the track. And for Sean's team to make that round win, you know, that's extra, that's special for them because they hope to see them get here. We have our work cut out for us. Now, changing into the mindset, I've never been in this headspace before. <laughs> Being in the countdown. Starting from 10, you know, after today, and the points resetting, um, yeah, our work's cut out, but I'm looking forward to this mountain. Open it up for questions. Sure. Well, yeah. Can you clarify, is Papa Jazz on for the rest of the season? Because we've seen things that was just too race deal. What is the situation with Papa Jazz right now? So the situation changes daily, I mean, sometimes by the minute. <laughs> well, what a lot of people, um, uh, I like to tell them is things happen fast, and they happen at the races. I mean, that's why the meetings take place, that's where you gotta, you gotta be here. You think that I'm focused on driving that race car all the time? I only need to do that when I put on the helmet. So where are we at right now? Um, as of right now, we've had two races, and this is the third. We have conversations about some more races this year. I can say we are running, obviously, the rest of the races this season. Now, what car is what? This is what I know. When we go to Charlotte next weekend, we are the firing car. At Dallas and St. Louis, those are unbranded at this moment. We are Pennzoil in Vegas and Fire Aid at Pomona. I feel like I'm missing one. We are Mopar at Reading. At Reading. So there's a good, the, the opportunity is there for Papa John's to be on the car, Dallas and St. Louis, and that's what we're working on right now. But nothing has buttoned up. And at the same time, all the conversations are in place. You heard John yesterday, he has a contract at hand for our future as we work that out. Um, and I can't wait for to get back, I guess, to the other side of the real world tomorrow where we get to measure how well, you know, Pop. NHRA as the sanctioning body and the fans in our team, how big of an impact we've been able to make it for Papa John's. They're up 10 points in this region. That's huge. So I get to put on my other hat tomorrow, but today I get to put on the Mel Yellow hat and the Texas or the, the Countdown hat and um, enjoy and enjoy the moment. So to follow up what you said about the next or the contract in the hand, does that mean a full sponsorship next year or? There's, there's uh, options in there. There's the options that are in there, yes. So anywhere from four races to 24 races. There's an even extra dynamic to it that involve other partners that work collaboratively, collaboratively together to get to those 24 races with Papa John's. So um, we have those business discussions to be had for how many races Papa John's is on. So it's more than just Oh, I would love all 24, so let's do that. We have a lot of back, we have a, we have a lot of groundwork to lay down, and then we'll be able to know. Other questions? Leah, Leah, throughout this entire scenario, you've talked about all of these people, sponsors that have helped you, and I, I, have, I must say that the only person I haven't heard you talk about is the person closest to you, your husband. What's he been like through this whole deal? A rock, a rock, rock solid. Um, he has probably been one of the very few people that have ever seen the moments, not that I'm saying I ever really got down or anything, but if there were to be somebody that would see a moment like that, that has been him. And he makes sure that I only drop one notch and he's like the springboard and he springs me back up. He, we've been we've been through a lot together, and um, and he he knows that he he knows more than I know that that we can that we can pull this off. And hearing it from him, yeah, he is he is in the background. Gary Pritchett, clutch specialist, car chief on the Capco car. Um, he is in the background in all this, and and like I say, when I'm not here by myself, you're right. Um, it's a huge thanks to him. Well, maybe not the background, actually. He's in the other lane half the time, so. <laughs> <laughs> over there, Probably over there. Yeah, trying try to, try to beat us. And, uh, it's, it's interesting because
because they've had such a successful season from a qualifying and performance standpoint, maybe not actually winning the race. Um, so I'll come back from, as we all know, the numerous oil downs and blow-ups and situationally challenged times that we've had this year, and he'll come back and, you know, he's like second or third qualifier. I'm like, don't you, don't you complain that you're not number one qualifier. Like, I just lost 30 points. So as much as I keep him in check, he keeps me in check on the positive side of you, you can do it. You're, and he tells me every single day I'm a badass racer, and I can do it. And we'll talk at night, and I'll be like, you know what, I'm nervous. I'm nervous for tomorrow. You know, maybe I was not on my game of qualifying or there's this pressure standpoint coming into the next day, and he tells me every single time. Not Sometimes more than others, but I know when he tells me that I can do it and I'm a badass racer, I believe him. So that's that's where that faith lies. And um, yeah, he was the first one to text me, of course. And he's in the middle of servicing for, for the next round of Eva's Nationals for Steve Torrance. So Steve saw your clutch guys texting me in between rounds. <laughs> Anybody else? Good. What have you learned about yourself this year? Not just so much on the track, but off the track, with changing the teams, the sponsors, and things. Is that is that any stronger? I mean, you say you're badass. I mean, are you more badass now? <laughs> That's a wonderful question. I think what I have learned about myself is perseverance. I've, from a conditioning standpoint, right? From, from an athlete pushes themselves and pushes themselves. And, and then you, your body gets tired, your mind gets tired, and you feel like that's your, your peak. Well, I have felt so many times throughout this year that I'm, I'm at that limit, I'm at that limit. And I've learned to complete a goal. Um, that's been difficult for me. I mean, not all, not all the way, but I'm really good at starting things, and I'm really good at following through. And I haven't always been the best at like sealing an absolute deal. And I've learned it's all about your strengths and weaknesses. So, with the partnerships that I've been able to create, um, I know that I don't own my own team. I don't know how, or I'm, I'm not capable of completely fulfilling all marketing objectives. So my weakness is that. Therefore, I team up with the best team that I absolutely can with Don Schumacher, and then together we go and close the deals. So what I've learned about myself is, I, gosh, I, I thought about going back to school in these last couple months for business. I have my communications degree and my marketing degree, and I want to go back for business to help my situation better. And then. In these last 60 days, like there is no school that I could go to <laughs> to learn what I've been learning and through. I mean, maybe I'll go teach a class so they got what not to do and what to do. Um, and I've learned to trust my instincts. Uh, you know, sometimes people, I don't know, that's, that's not a good idea. You shouldn't say that or you know, play this safe over here. Um, I've learned to have a big picture of status, where my future is at, where my team's future is at, and. What do the fans want to see happen in a give and take situation? So I've, I've learned to, I've, I've learned to, uh, oh, that's a lot of good stuff. I've learned a lot of stuff. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. We're going to get a countdown. That's what, that's what we did. Thanks, everybody. Good? Leah, thanks for coming in. Congratulations. All right. Thank you.